Welcome back to Grid Down Prepping at Guns America Digest. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so at gunsamerica.com slash digest. The articles that go with these videos live at griddownmag.com. And usually, they're going to have a lot of details that I forgot in the video or didn't feel that I needed to expand in the video. And they will, if, the, if it, you could be watching this months from now, the product links will be there if they're still live. Um, if you're not subscribed to Guns America Digest, you're not getting our emails, you're not getting this stuff as it goes out. This product this week is something else. Um, this is actually a classic, this is a classic um, one that you would want to be on our email list for because there are not a lot of these in the United States. And it's an odd thing. Um, it's not specifically a prepping product. The reason I was attracted to it, and I just stumbled on it, is because I, a lot of the stuff that I've done in Prepping 101, back when it was that, and now at Grid Down, is I'm trying to get people to expand their horizons and understand that in the United States, in the entire Western world, we really have a cushy lifestyle. Even the, the disadvantaged of us have almost everything we need. So when you're looking at how to live without that, you have to look at other cultures. One of the countries that I've seen lives mostly off grid is China. Not in their cities, of course. Their cities are very modern structures, but what's hidden in China is that the average workaday people who haven't migrated to the cities are mostly, they call themselves peasants. And many of them, many of them, many of them are still doing things the way they did hundreds of years ago. And they're still leading a very traditional lifestyle. So I've looked into what they do and I've seen that, that there's a lot of things that they take for granted as part of their life that in the West is mind boggling to us. It's not something that we would think of. Um, and, and here you'll see some of those things that are that are like considered to be old timey, right? That, that, that you'll see it on the, in the camping, the, the camping stores and, and things like that. One of those is, is popcorn poppers, right? Um, the, 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 the rotating popcorn popper, which I'm sure many of you who don't go to Bass Pro and Cabela's um, have ever seen. Because unless you've been in that kind of off-grid camping, hunting camp environment, you just don't see things like that. Most of you guys have never even used a cast iron pan, I'm sure of it. And, and, but a lot of you have. You know, and a lot of you guys are hunting camp guys, a lot of you guys know that stuff. And the, the equivalent of that popcorn pop popper in China is actually a, a much more useful product off grid than that is for food. Um, and why I say for food is that it is not just popcorn that it does. It will puff, not just pop, it will puff pretty much any grain. I've tried a few. I've tried corn and wheat and millet, and it works. Supposedly, you can also do beans. I may return to this and, and, and do more of these things, but supposedly, you can do all of these things. And one of the things that it's attracted me to popcorn is the idea of travel, all right? Is that when you are living off grid, you're going to be going out to scout for resources. After, you know, after things come down, you're gonna have to go looking for resources. And having some food that travels well is important. I've covered um, hardtack making hardtack, bread obviously travels well. And this is kind of one of those things, it's a little bit sideways, but, and I almost bailed on it, I have to tell you, I almost bailed on it, but it's so cool that I didn't, um, because there's only a few thousand of you guys paying attention anymore. 
Um, it's not like the old days where there were tens of thousands of you doing, you know, following Prepping 101. Now it's only a few thousand from what I've been able to gather. And for those of you who are, you understand that I have from the very beginning tried to do these kind of out of the box things. I mean, I have a, I did a, an Amish dough mixer, a hand crank dough mixer, which I've, I've never seen in any other prepping space besides. And it's still there on Prepping 101 if you want to go look for it. So what this guy is, all right, and I'll, I'll open the box because this is actually a marketed product in China, all right? And it says bang, and it says traditional popcorn popper or something in Chinese. I use my Google Translate on my phone. And what it is, you see this dirty one here, and I'll explain why I have the dirty one. What it is, is it is a pressure, it's a cast stainless steel pressure vessel that has a silicone cover, and you put your grain in here, and it, and you close it and lock it, and then you heat it up, and it has a pressure gauge on it. And the pressure gauge tells you when to pop it open. Now, as you can see, it starts to go red around nine, but I've found it to be most useful in the 11 range. Um, but I don't stuff the, I only fill the, the popper up, a, you know, about two thirds. You put this guy on its own stand, okay? And then you use a heater and you, you, you basically just turn it. It's open now. But you, you turn it as it heats up and you watch the pressure gauge. Now, as you watch the pressure gauge, it will come up and when it hits your desired thing, then you put this bag on top of it and close it like so. And it, see this hole here goes through the, goes through the, and I'm gonna do this obviously for the video, it goes through here. And then you go boom, and the thing just goes boom. And, and it's really awesome. And what you end up with is popped corn. Now, I am using, I'm using regular old grain corn for this instead of popcorn. You don't want to use popcorn. Popcorn is too dry and it just comes out like popcorn. It doesn't come out as puffed corn, which is a lot easier to eat and digest than popcorn. There are two types of heaters that you can use. One is slow and one is fast. I haven't determined yet, I've only done a few batches of these, so I haven't determined yet if there's an advantage to doing the slow as to the fast, or, or to the fast. For the slow, it kind of comes with this, all right? This is a double wick alcohol burner with wick alcohol burners. It's not your alcohol burners like I've, I've covered on Prepping 101. And you can leave the alcohol in it. The top is sealed and these caps make it so that you don't have to empty the alcohol out every time. Um, and then you have, the, you have the cap as a snuffer. All right, so that's, that's how this works. And it only will burn denatured alcohol, the one that says fuel on it. It will burn everything, it will burn diesel, but you can see what happens when you try to burn diesel. When you, this is what happens to your popper when you try to burn diesel. You end up with this giant mess of carbon. And the only reason I did that is just to prove it that you couldn't use kerosene, diesel, paint thinner, any of the things that do burn with black smoke because the reason that those work in the stoves that they work in is because they're either under pressure, which I've showed you with the multi-fuel stove recently, or they have some kind of burn chamber where the air, there's an air control burn chamber that is formulated just so that it burns blue and burns without smoke. Um, this guy is really short, all right? So the only other thing that I've found that works with him is this, one of those propane burners that I covered a few weeks ago. And you just run that, just run the, run the, 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 the ball of it right over the propane fire, it also will work like that. And, and as I said, we are gonna light this and we are gonna do this. Now, I'm going to only fill this up about two thirds of the way. See, that's where we are now. 
That's one handful. And if you're a regular popcorn maker, you'll understand that this is actually quite a, a good deal of food that I'm making. That's why this size is the popular size because it holds enough for several servings of popcorn. Okay, that's about halfway. I go, from what I've done so far, I've gone a little bit over halfway to about, I don't know, around there. That gives me plenty of room to work with so that it's still rolling around in there, okay? Then you back this out, you back the screw out until the hook catches, and then you turn the hook, you, you do it so that the hook is caught, okay? Then you tighten it up with the provided wrench, okay? And I don't, I've never received any instructions as to how tight to do it, so I do it pretty tight, okay? And I haven't had a problem knocking off the, knocking off the, um, knocking it open. When this is done, I'm going to put the bag over it and I'm going to put this on top of it, which this, it comes with this, and I'm just gonna, boom, pop it open. I'm gonna use the denatured alcohol first, the fuel, the can marked fuel. And you can get this stuff at Walmart and Home Depot. I buy it um, at Walmart. And it does take a little while, so don't, don't be shy with it as far as filling it up. Um, now, just beware, this stuff is extremely volatile. I offer you this advice at, my, at your own risk, obviously. I'm not, um, I'm not advocating that you do any of this. I'm just showing you what I do, all right? So this is what I do. Just be aware that this stuff is extremely flammable, extremely flammable, and it's just not, it's not for the light of heart. Now I am getting some wind here, so I am probably going to have to, um, probably gonna have to augment it a little bit, but we'll see if I can get it up to temperature. Now you see it goes in the stand like so, and this is burning, you probably can't see that on the camera, but it is burning. It's a, it is, it's a double burner, so it, it does, it, it does, um, it does throw some serious heat for sure. It does, it does take a while before it comes up to temperature, before it comes up to pressure at all. So you can, you just, just keep it rotating. I don't, I'm not religious with constantly rotating it, which I'm not with those popcorn poppers either. The thing itself has to heat up. Okay, I have put away my windbreak and I'm going to snuff my flame. Remember, you have to put the caps on there if you don't want that fuel to bleed away, okay? My pressure right now is right on, it's about 14 actually, it's still going up, so I gotta open this guy up because I'm starting to redline my, starting to get well, well past my pressure Okay, so, but I try not to get flustered, okay, because getting flustered is not gonna achieve anything, okay? So that is like that, and oop, I'm a little hot here on the back end, so my, there we go. And there it is. This is what you end up with you end up with puffed corn, okay? Not popcorn, puffed corn. And as you can see, this is a little bit dark, but that is what the corn looks like. And that's how much popcorn I got from one batch. And that's how much popped corn I got from one batch. And they do actually give you tweezers to pull out any stuck corn that you may have in there, which I don't have any. I'm gonna load it back up with this brown and wild rice mix. It's hot, so I have to be very careful not to burn myself. But it's nice that they give you the gloves, so if you're doing more than one, 
batch. And the first batch took me about, I would say 15 minutes to heat up, even in the wind like this with that burner. Um, but I'm probably gonna use the propane for the second batch. And as you saw, tightening it up pretty darn tight, it didn't, it was not hard to open. For this one, even though I was able to successfully do that one in the, in the, in the wind, I'm going to, I'm going to still use the propane for this one. And I'm going to put my wind barrier back up. Now this one is going to, this batch is going to heat up a lot faster than the last one because obviously the container is already rip snorting hot. With an already heated um, vessel, it heated up in less than 10 minutes. It came to pressure in less than 10 minutes and I am, I'm actually just north of, looks like 13, 14 right now. I'm going to tighten this up a lot tighter than it was the last trip. And my fire is off. My wind break is down. And let's see how the rice did. So the rice gave me that much ri puffed rice. Okay, that's how much I got from it. And even though they looked kind of different in the bag, they really are not that different in practice. It's standard, what you would call regular old puffed rice, okay? And in my experience, that works for puffed millet, puffed wheat, puffed um, just about any grain you could do. And if you don't pick them out, they do tend to burn in the, in the, the hot vessel. If you guys respond to this and you're interested, I will do the big one, all right? I have one that takes three or four pounds of grain, and it is much more of a long-term preservation kind of, kind of product. This guy is inexpensive, relatively inexpensive, and um, gives you the idea. If, if you guys, I uh, like ho-hum, you know, like the coal stove. I did the, the most awesome coal stove a few weeks ago. No one really seemed to care. Um, Americans just aren't interested in coal unless they already burn it. So if y'all are not interested, then y'all are not interested. Um, but if you are interested, I will do the big one. I have the big one and I will source them for you, all right? That's the big thing is I will source them for you. I have sourced these out of China. And in China, these guys are used for all kinds of stuff because they're, they're basically a very high pressure, quick pressure cooker. And a lot of Chinese restaurants, street vendors use them, not just for making puffed corn, in fact, the box, um, this little box on this box says something like get rich quick on it because the, the street vendors um, sell this grain to, um, to passersby. Like it's a, it's a very common thing to see, to see on, on, on the streets in China, in the villages of course, to see people um, to see people selling these on the street. So if you guys are interested, I will do the big one, which I have not fired up yet. I have it. Um, it's yay big. It's probably 50 pounds cast because the PSI on this goes up to over 220 PSI. So just to give you an example, canners, a canner pot that we use to can with goes up to about 15 PSI, okay? This is running at, at, at where I'm shutting it off around 12. It looks like it's about 180 PSI, okay? This is a serious cast piece of steel. And the big one is a big, serious cast piece of steel. So I don't know that you guys are gonna be all that interested. I'm interested. 
um, because I'm interested in a lot of things. But I'm not sure that you guys will be interested. And so I figured, you know what, rather than try to do them both, I'll do the little guy. And this guy is not the smallest one. They make these as small as an egg for a little single serving kind of thing. Um, I felt like this was a good middle, middle of the road size to give you a, a you know, enough that, enough food that, that, that you could take it on a, you know, take it on the road for kids or whatever, or make it for kids for cereal in the morning or something like that. Kids are a big part of my, of my um, plan because I have seven of them. <laughs> some of them are old now, um, but some of them are still pretty small. So having things that kids will eat, uh, I have a lot of powdered milk. So putting away um, grain with powdered milk and having a popper, as long as you've got the fuel for it, um, that's a, you know, it's a possibility. And, and honestly, getting the, the popper black like this, it didn't hurt it. It still popped just fine. It just was ugly. It got black all over everything. And it wasn't, it wasn't really a big deal. So I would be comfortable running this with a rocket stove, no problem. In fact, it's perfect for a rocket stove because you only have to cook for 15 minutes. So a tiny little rocket stove, especially those travel ones, it's perfect for a rocket stove because you could just sit there 15, 20 minutes, give yourself a rip snort and fire, and you'll end up with, you know, cereal. I'll see you next time.